How to Use Google Docs in the Classroom. Google Docs is a suite of software similar to Microsoft Office. You can create documents, make a presentation, or even a spreadsheet. They correspond to Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. In this video, we'll be focusing primarily on documents. Documents is equivalent to Microsoft Word. It's Google's online word processing program. It's a tool that allows you to construct written assignments by yourself or with collaborators. It's a cloud-based tool, and some classroom ideas include creating surveys and feedback, brainstorming, and it's been proven to increase student engagement and discussion. Some teachers also link their documents with Flubberoo to create quizzes and tests which allow for instant grading and feedback. One major benefit is the ability to chat. You can chat in real time and collaborate on the same document with many other students. To do that, all you need to do is click on the arrow to the right of the names at the top of the screen and you can currently chat with all users currently editing the same document. Let's go over how to create a Google Doc. To get to Google Docs, I'm going to go to docs.google.com. Google Docs is where all my online documents will be stored and I can work on them in real time with other people. Everything is stored under my Google Drive and this is all for free. You can access these files anywhere using your computer or even a cell phone or tablet. I want to create a new file. So let's pretend I'm a high school English teacher and I want to brainstorm with my students. I'm going to scroll down and click document. Google's online word processor, Google Docs, can change the way that students and teachers work through the writing process, from the very first brainstorming activity to the feedback provided to students on their final drafts. So within this Word document, it looks very similar to Microsoft Word, and I can edit it and modify it in the exact same way. So I'm going to center it. When I think of Romeo and Juliet, the first word I think of is, I'm going to change the name of this file, Romeo and Juliet Brainstorming, and I can now share this file with my students. Once the brainstorming session is done, I can download it as any one of these file formats which will let me make hard copies to pass out in class if I needed to. But for now, this is the file that I've created and I'm going to show how my students can now edit this file with me. Teachers are also very busy. So let's say you need to create an assignment for students, but you don't have access to a computer. Google Docs has that taken care of. A major benefit of using Google Docs is the ability to create from not just your computer, but a tablet or a cell phone. So right here, I downloaded the Docs application. It's completely free in the App Store. So you see a list of options on top, so I click the plus. and I'm now creating a Google Documents using just my tablet. So let's say I want to make a writing prompt for my students. How does the idea of identity contribute to the story of Romeo and Juliet? So even without typing a single word, by using just my voice, I'm able to create this document. So I'm back on my laptop, I click my drive, and it says untitled document. I click on that. How does the ident idea of identity contribute to the story of Romeo and Juliet? 
It's the same writing prompt that I created on my tablet, but is now stored in my drive. So from here, I can edit this file, I can add more questions, list the requirements, and then send it to my students. There's four ways to share your docs with your students. With Google Drive, you can share files without having to email them as attachments, although that is an option that's available. The first option of sharing is to share with a non-Google account. When you share with somebody who has a Hotmail, Outlook, or Yahoo account, they'll get a link to open and view the file. They'll be able to sign in and edit the file only if they have a Google account. If they don't want a Google account, they'll still be able to view the file. The invitation you send to the non-Google account is valid for 14 days. You can also send a link to a shared file. If you set a file or folder to anyone with the link or public, you can send the link to another person and they'll be able to access it. All you have to do is go to drive.google.com, check the box next to the file or folder you'd like to share, click the Google Drive share icon, copy the link at the top of the sharing settings, and send the link to another person or mailing list in an email or chat. So if you look at the share icon, all you need to do is click that button and you're able to share it with anybody using your contacts list or individual email accounts. You can also send files as an email attachment. Google Drive eliminates the need to send files as attachments because everything is stored online. But if sending it as an attachment is a must, this is how you do so. You open the file you'd like to share and you click on the file menu you scroll down and email as an as attachment is available so select the file type and then enter the email address that you'd like to send it to and click send so in this example you click share email as attachment and you're sending it as a PDF file so everybody who gets this file will be able to open this attachment as a PDF you can also share a file with an email address or mailing list. Go to drive.google.com and click the share icon. Choose availability option, which is private, anyone with the link or public. Type the email address of the people you want to share with in the text box. Add people. You can add a single person or a mailing list. Choose the access level from the drop down menu. And this is where collaborators can either view, comment, or edit. If you select they can view, they will not be able to edit or comment. So it's important that if you are collaborating, you allow the other users to have that level of access. Click share and save. So once you share your Google document, you can also edit it together. So major teaching advantages of this are, is that as an owner or collaborator, you can observe the work in progress and give feedback instantly. Or you can take a backseat role as a viewer and just watch your students engage and track their participation. There's real-time chat, and it's a great way to look at the group work that they are involved in. So in this example, a student wrote, a rough draft on The Great Gatsby. If you look at the margins on the right, the teacher highlighted certain aspects that he wanted the student to comment on. So in the top part it says upstanding character and the teacher says how else might you phrase upstanding character? The student responds something like moral integrity perhaps would work better. By instantly editing files together Teachers no longer have to take days to write comments and then send it back to their students and it saves a lot of time for both parties. Students and teachers can edit their documents together, greatly improving the writing process. I click on my document and I now see the words that my students came up with. I can highlight a certain part and here I can insert a link 
to relevant information that I might want them to look at, a comment or a footnote. So if I put comment, I can now say, the comment will be listed in the margin and it'll correlate with this word. Google Docs has included an absolute game changer with an app called Kaizena. This allows me to provide oral commentary with my laptop's built-in microphone that students can listen to at the very instant that I'm done recording. So I go to kaizena.com and I click on boxes. I now see the same document that's listed in my Google Drive that I can leave comments on. So I highlight a word and there is now a microphone icon that I click on and I can leave instant feedback to my students. So for the first word I can say why don't Romeo and Juliet think about their actions or reflect throughout the play? Why are they so impetuous? Students can go back and as they edit this document together they will be able to hear the feedback that I left them with the corresponding highlighted words or sections of the paper. Google Docs also has a wide range of document tools that are available to incorporate in the classroom. You can save a lot of time by looking at some of the templates that are available using Google Docs. One major benefit of using Google Docs is the wide range of templates that are available to the user. You can sort by the most popular or the highest rating or even the type that you need, documents, spreadsheets, presentations. We can also sort by different categories. For our purposes, we're focusing on students and teachers. You now have the most popular templates that are used by students and teachers. A student report, a syllabus, a presentation, a project planner, or even a lesson plan concept. For this video, let's focus on specifically documents. So it's now sorted, and we want our students to use this template to take notes in class. So we click Use This Template. and it opens up under Google Docs. The organization name, we can modify that just like a Word document. Student name, course name, and students can now use this format to take all the notes in class as required by the teacher. If we click File, they can email collaborators, so if they have a group project and you want them to take notes together, they can email this file or email it as an attachment, and those in that group can work together and open up this document and edit it together. So huge benefits of using Google Docs is that it's stored online and it's cloud-based so you don't longer have to carry around a USB stick or a micro SD card and try to save everything. If you lose your work because you forgot to save, it's fine because everything's saved online. Simultaneous editing, which is huge for students and teachers. So 10, 20, 30 students can log in to one file and you can work on this file together. So in our example of the brainstorming, students are able to all log in and immediately start writing sentences and putting their insight into the brainstorming that we were doing. You can collaborate from a distance without ever meeting in person. It's accessible anywhere and it's easy to share control access editors, viewers, or publish online.